Hey, what's up? This is Laid Back Luke, DJ and producer, Kung Fu athlete, and family guy. COVID-19, the novel coronavirus we can't seem to escape from. Today, we'll talk about my side of the story. Coronavirus versus the DJ industry, homeschooling as a dedicated dad, bedroom DJing, 32,000 people without a job in Atlantic City, new initiatives and special guest Jaws. What does it look like in China right now after the virus? That and more in this vlog. Let's go. Remember in the last vlog I told you this? Next time's vlog, I'm gonna talk about the coronavirus. I am actually doing a, a global travel next time. Well, that didn't happen. I was in the Netherlands almost ready to leave to Singapore when America announced the travel ban from Europeans to the United States for 30 days. Sadly enough, this meant I couldn't travel out to my shows in Singapore and in Sydney. So the round the world didn't happen. I made my way back to the United States ASAP. I was in the States a week prior for my last show before the global lockdown. This was at Lava Club in Verona, upstate in New York. Shout out to them. But it was getting strange not being able to shake the crowd's hands. Fast forward to the Netherlands a week later where, with tears in my eyes, I was saying goodbye to my sons for supposedly 30 days. This would have been the first time in all my travels I'm away from them for a month. Traveling was already getting very strange. Armed with Lysol wipes to wipe down my seat, I had an N95 mask on the whole time. By the way, the mask I found in my dad's attic, he still had two of these because he uses them for his woodwork whenever he builds amps or guitars as a hobby. Getting through customs in the States was stranger and slower than normal, but I made it and just in time, for the ban. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to see Ashley for 30 days, nor be with my daughter for that time. And then everything crumbled. Events got called off, Miami Music Week, uh, South by Southwest, Ultra Music Festival. And then we took up social distancing and quarantining. And it's crazy, hand sanitizer became the liquid gold and toilet paper was nowhere to be found and Lysol wipes became so precious. What a shift instantly in perception. Okay, so the entertainment industry was one of the first to be taken out and overnight, we all became bedroom DJs. A lot of touring DJs went from having a job to making absolutely zero. But not only DJs, the whole touring infrastructure, promoters, venue, bar personnel, sound people, but all the teams behind this too, I would love to talk more about the business side. So I've invited my manager, Olga Heinz, who handles all my business, and Lou B, who runs HQ2 at Ocean Resort in Atlantic City, to ask them a couple of questions. Can you explain for the average viewer how exactly the restrictions around COVID-19 have impacted your business? Not everybody knows. There's a couple of companies that we run here in the office. The publishing company is running as usual and we are focusing a lot on supporting our writers, trying to put together virtual writing camps and encouraging them to produce. The label is pretty much the same, and in fact, we have been trying to create initiatives to help the various artists that we know are very much impacted here. Hey, Luke, that's a good question. I mean, the restrictions have totally crushed us. Um, we're in Atlantic City, uh, nine casinos closed, 32,000 employees with no job. Four major nightclubs closed, um, HQ2, Premier, uh, Dare, and Harris Pool. And not that's not even including the bars and everyone trying to make their summer plans. Uh, we don't know when the restrictions will be lifted, although we do think they're necessary at this time. Let's talk about the Mixmash Quarantine EP series momentarily. The team at Mixmash has come up with two amazing initiatives supporting upcoming artists, much like a lot of you. For my producers, we have launched our Quarantine EP series, challenging you to submit your best track and get the chance to win not only a release on this EP, but also a 300 euros advance and a full promo push. All info and how to submit in the description below. 
And so back to the interview, Olga, this all has been an adjustment, right? It's been an adjustment overall. Everybody working remotely, of course, and being limited in our movements. Um, but the most important side that has suffered is the uh, agency and the management side. There, we are struggling to maintain our responsibilities to the employees, to the running costs of the company, and of course, uh, to all the artists that we represent and that are suffering in the same way. What does this mean for you right now? Are there any options available to generate income and to keep your head above water? We are looking at different ways to generate money, but the reality is that when it comes to replacing touring income, there isn't really anything out there at the moment that really replaces that. Yeah, for me personally, um, as you know, my whole entire career, I've been asking people to come out. <laughs> now I'm the guy telling people to stay in, which is really crazy for me. Um, could I do other things? Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not really prepared to, uh, not even close to giving up on what I do. Um, so I'm just going to try to stay home and hoping my loved ones listen to me uh, because uh, it's a war out there. And um, making a financial plan right now seems a little bit crazy to me. What we try to do is we try to enforce and strengthen other sources of income, like some artists make some money on an endorsement. Some artists make some money uh, selling online courses. Uh, they might be doing some other work that generates income from, for them that we try to uh, encourage and focus on. And of course, for all artists, it remains important to keep producing music if that's something that they, uh, that they do. But that's not going to be an immediate source of income, even if the records are very successful. It will take quite some time to, to generate money there. I know as an artist, it's not easy to just send everyone their money back. I also have people depend on me. What is your view on that? No, Luke, I don't think any artist should even be thinking about giving back money right now. That seems to be crazy. Artists have families, they have managers who they're responsible for. Agents, although we think they're robots, they have families as well. And um, I think to take from one family to give to an ex, who can make a call? like that at a time like this. There's a human side to that, and there's a legal business side to that. And so a lot of the contracts, we'll see a lot of protection for the artist, frankly. Uh, but we try to take a pragmatic view. I think everybody realizes that the only way we're gonna come out of this if the business is actually there after a couple of months. So that promoters sustain themselves uh, and that pro promoters are able to actually uh, organize events again in a couple of months, hopefully, when they're allowed to. Money from a promoter, I think you got to work with them or a venue. I think you have to work with them um, for the next six months and and try to make it trickle down the right way. Um, a perfect example is if an artist charges less and a fan comes to a show with a $100 bill, um, if 50 goes towards the artist's pay and 50 is left for the, the venue to pay their bills and to pay their payroll and also... Out of that 50 goes a tip. And obviously you know a lot of people in this industry make money off of tips. So an artist charging less um, is definitely going to help uh, the actual economy. So happy I could have this business knowledge on the vlog so you can hear about the world behind the performances as well. Can I just say how thankful I am for the internet right now, for Wi-Fi. I am also thankful for the comments you made on last time's vlog, the demo time vlog. Shout out to Andrew Yak on the number two comment. I actually started listening to dubstep in 2008. I love all sorts of music and Oshin on the number one comment spreading that knowledge. Thank you all for the comments everyone. Let me know how you are doing during this pandemic below and I'll tell you my situation right now. Don't go anywhere, still to come in this vlog, an exclusive interview with Jaws. Ashley and I have been in self-isolation and doing the social distancing, but my daughter at her mother's house too, and it's sad not being able to hug her or have her over at my place, but it's safest this way. Like many of you, I've started homeschooling now too, and every day I tackle math and arts or science with my daughter on FaceTime. It's my quality time with her at the moment and I love the interaction that it brings, though digitally. And speaking of interaction and internet, can you believe it how many DJs and producers are on Twitch right now, live streaming, 
playing sets. I think it's wild how much knowledge is being spread currently and how many of them are interacting with their fan base now. And I do appreciate that. So happy to have Jaws right now in the vlog to talk about his endeavors that he's making right now regarding streaming. And I'm going to ask him a couple of questions. So how has the virus impacted you as a DJ and producer? Safe to say that it's impacted all of us pretty seriously. I mean, luckily for me, um, you know, I was supposed to have most of April off anyways. So, you know, I guess that's kind of a silver lining. I was literally in the middle of a bus tour as this whole coronavirus thing started progressing and it went from kind of being like a almost like a joke not really like a joke but you know no one was really taking it that seriously and then it started getting more and more serious and you know uh ha halfway through a little bit more than halfway through the tour we were going to mexico for edc but i woke up and i got a call from my manager and he was like yeah you need to get a flight home as soon as possible because th it's it's over like every all tours are pulled everyone has to go home like that's it. That's done. Um, so, and obviously Miami, I didn't get to do Ultra with Nightmare. I didn't get to do the the Miami Music Week party. I always do with Ed's Dead. Um, and all of that stuff is a bummer. But at the same time, everyone got home safe. Uh, I'm not sick. Uh, I'm with my family. And I wasn't supposed to be touring this month anyway, so it could be a lot worse. What are good things or new things that you have learned from this? Once the dust is settled, all of us will kind of forever be impacted. Yeah, I think also another little silver lining from this is that everyone kind of gets to slow down and take a break. Our world is so fast paced right now. I mean, whether it's in music or, you know, anything really, um, everything moves at such a light speed pace that, you know, I, th I feel like everyone kind of needed a pause button on life. Uh, to really be able to assess what's important. And I think that's what a lot of people are going to have to do right now because people are going to have to start making tough decisions. And, you know, you're going to figure out pretty quick who is really important to you, what is really important to you. Um, and, you know, for me as a musician, it, it kind of gives me time to decide what I want to do next. What's next is he'll give us an exclusive little tour through his streaming studio. But I do want to take a moment to talk to the real DJs out here. And this is fun. We are hosting a live DJ party featuring you. As part of the quarantine series, we are giving you the chance to show us your DJ skills and earn a spot on our virtual party lineup. Our live stream will commence on multiple platforms. And yes, we will pay you a fee as you would in a club. How does that sound? Follow the link in the description and be fast. We will need to have your audition mix in before Monday, 10 a.m. EDT, 3 p.m. ECT. Okay, so let's get back to the vlog and back to Jaws. Can you give us a little tour of your streaming center and what you do with it? Uh, this is just like a little office in my mother-in-law's place that I kind of took over. I got my MacBook. I also have my gaming computer. Down here I have my stream PC, which is an NZXT tower with a 2080 Ti and a bunch of cool nerdy gamer stuff. Um, this is a TV that was already in here that I'm using as like a secondary screen for uh, my Twitch chat and all of that stuff. This is my main streaming uh, screen. Uh, and this is just, uh, honestly, I don't even use this screen, but it's just there to show uh, the capture card that I'm using. Uh, this is a Go XLR. It's my TC Helicon, which is uh, one of the uh, coolest things that I own. Uh, TC Helicon is a music company. So this is an all-in-one uh, DAC that handles my uh, streaming mic. Uh, voice chat if you're in like Discord or something for gaming. I have my MacBook inputting into this and then that goes to the stream PC. And so I have the ability to do music streams, which is what I what I normally do. And then I also have the opportunity to uh, do game streams, which I, if I want, which I, I switch back and forth pretty frequently. So happy to have him in the vlog, Jaws. Make sure to check out his links below. And just like that, it's a whole new DJ dimension that's going on right now. And it's crazy. Sometimes it almost feels like it's a new world versus the old world. Remember when we went to festivals, when we 
bunched up and danced the loud music in clubs. So many things we took for granted, visiting family, hugging our loved ones. This new world has opened up solutions and possibilities though. For instance, we became expert hand washers. We are on FaceTime more with our family and friends and how about less accidents because there's no rush hour. I've been reading about the advantages for the ecosystem as well. And so what changes for me? I resonate with this DJ SKI83's tweet. My workload hasn't changed much. It's wild though. I still have these dates popping up on my computer and I'm constantly reminded that these won't go through. Actually, I have these reoccurring dreams that I'm at a show and that I'm about to perform and then I wake up. It's the new world versus the old world. A newfound respect for jobs we never glamorized before like teachers, grocery store workers, fast food and restaurants and especially all healthcare personnel but even all the people that have been working in the background for years warning us about coming pandemics and our lack of preparedness for them. Before this I thought it would never happen to me either. Flu pandemic in 1918? Psh, it's 2020, right? To conclude this, I saw this Instagram post from DJ Unity from Shanghai uh, in China the other day and I figured I'd ask him some questions about how the end of all of this would look like since they're ahead of us in China. So Unity, you posted on Instagram that the storm has died down a bit. How was life living in the storm? And how many days were you on a lockdown? Luckily in my city, we weren't really locked down uh, compared to other cities. But all the public transportation, shops and restaurants were closed down for a month. We could still go to the supermarket and buy the groceries. But most of the people, they choose to stay indoor until the storm died down. What were the things you did during lockdown? Did you learn any new things? How did you spend your time? Well, I've been experimenting new sounds for my music and also I was trying to do some live streaming during the process to kill time. And I was trying to keep being fit and doing home workouts. And I learned how to cook. And so how is the near future looking for you? Is it already too early to think about summer plans? touring plans or festivals you will play at? Is China lifting travel bans and are clubs opening again? Um, I think it's way too early that to think about traveling or touring. Um, I'm not even worried about that, you know, like I think people just need to focus on how they're gonna stay, can stay safe at home. I'm just gonna focus on doing new music and some new fresh sounds. Regarding to the travel bans, I think there are quarantine rules for people who is travel domestically or internationally. I actually hoped he'd say Chinese summer is absolutely looking great and everything will be back as normal so soon. But he didn't and what I do know is that when it will, the parties will be insane. We'll have learned so much about hygiene, pandemic awareness, but most importantly, thoroughly enjoying the things we had to step away from momentarily. But until then, let's picture that moment and keep it in mind and lock ourselves away and Netflix and quarantine to do our part. Or YouTube and quarantine. It's the most responsible thing we can do right now, right? Doesn't sound too bad saving the world like that. I do think from all of this will come a better sense of community, people helping each other out and appreciation for all the little big things. Make sure to give that appreciation to the local businesses and small businesses as well as they are struggling at the moment. And another thank you to all the healthcare workers, the soldiers in this war against the virus. Thank you Olga, Luby. Jaws and Unity for joining me in this vlog. And thank you for joining me in this vlog. Next vlog, I don't want you to miss out, so make sure to hit that subscribe button right now and that like button as well. Next vlog, it's up to you. What would you like me to make? I'm thinking another DJ tutorial. Or should it be a producer tutorial? Or a home workout tutorial? A day of a DJ in self-isolation? I'm still very active. Make sure to leave it in the comments below and I'll have a look. Until then, stay safe everyone. Everyone, we will get through this and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, L's up, rave safely and salute.